Can you see anything right now? No. <laughs> That's why I said, let me take these off. I can't even see. <laughs> <laughs> this is Microphone Check Hip Hop from NPR Music. I'm Franny Kelly. I'm Ali Shaheed Muhammad. And I'm Young Chop on the beat. Young Chop Chana. on the beat. What's good? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm good. What you doing here at South by Southwest? To be honest, uh, my artists and stuff have shows out here, so I'm just out here with them. Cool. Just hanging out. Yeah, and then, you know, you walking the down 6th Street, bonding with my fans, man, you mm -hmm. know, taking pictures with whoever. Does that whoever. get crazy? Like it, you can't move? Yeah. Last night it was kind of crazy. It was crazy, because last night I took like a million pictures, and it was just crazy. I had one guy run up on me, hug me, and all that. It's kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> Yeah. I heard you've been working while you're down here, though. Yeah, I got to stay working everywhere. Yeah. It was hard to find the studio. My boy Gustavo came through last night. Mm -hmm. And the other nights, you know, we just got to know. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. you work wherever you go? Yes. And you don't have, like, favorite studios by now in yeah, all like, the towns? I got favorite studios only in L.A. Okay. And one in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. What's your process like? My process in the studio? Mm -hmm. Um. To me, I, I don't know, I switch it up every time. One time, sometimes I just, you know, gotta have the whole studio clear. I just vibe out real quick, just listen to some old music or something like that. What do you mean and, old music? You know, 70s music or Al Green or something, man. You know, I throw mm -hmm. something on. Yeah, I'm 20. <laughs> anyway, I still, you know, I'm still up on that. You know, I started listening to some. Like today, we was listening to Tupac. Got mm -hmm. a little couple of ideas off of that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Just like getting ideas and more of creative with the whole sound uh -huh. and add more stuff to it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And my other ones, I got at least got to mm -hmm. have some fruit in the studio, some chicken, and my MIDI keyboard, some waters, and a laptop, and we're going to get to work. Okay. Yeah. What application you work on? Uh, application. Like Logic, Pro Tools, Ableton, uh, Machine. Fruity Loops. I, I just started getting up on the machine. I, sorry, Fruity Loops, but machines is just going crazy for me. Feeling machine? Yeah, I'm loving it. I ain't never had a beat machine, nothing like that in my life. Mm -hmm. I know I already know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So machine really taught me. They really taught me. They hit me up. Oh, man, child, we got this new machine, studio. All right, we're going to show you. They sent the person to Atlanta. I was in Atlanta at the time. They showed me it for like, i say like 30 minutes of of them showing me. I caught on to it so quick. It was just. It's easy. It's easy. It's real easy. Yeah. yeah. What is it for people who don't know, people like me? How does it work? How does it work? It's just um, drums, snares, and claps, and instruments, and all that. Like, this like got everything in it at one, though. Yeah. Like when you have an MP, like I don't know about MPCs or none of that. It don't come with instruments, like mm -hmm. keyboard okay. sounds. I don't come with that, but this comes with it. But you, you know, out mm -hmm. of bundles. Okay. Yeah. When you're listening to old music or like mm -hmm. Tupac or whatever for inspiration, what are you mm -hmm. listening for? I'm listening to what they got, what they was doing with the keys. Like mm -hmm. I'm listening to more of the music part, such as the lyrics. I'm listening to like how they put it together and why they did it like that. Like, damn, I understand. Like really studying studying the song as of why why did they put that right there? It's so off right there. So why did they do that? That's what I'm more listening for mm -hmm. as of right now. Have you ever spoken to? Have you ever reached out to anybody who like from that era and asked them why they did things a certain way? I never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. I should. Yeah, so I should though. You can learn like you know, there's just not only just like the different technologies in the time, like synthesizers and the changes of synthesizers mm -hmm. through the '60s to the '70s through the '80s, even like it got a cleaner sound. Yeah, so now it got a cleaner of a sound, but yeah, I want that gritty in the sound. Yeah, you, should, you talk to some people. Yeah. There's, in, there's different things they push you through. Different mic pre's, different. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Different uh, compressors and stuff like that. Yeah. Some even use guitar amps to For push real. the keyboards through to give it like more of a biting, thicker, mm -hmm. fuller sound. So, 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. That sounds cool. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna ask a few people. <laughs> nice. You know, I, I know the no IDs and all them people, so it's gonna be like kind of easy, like because they used to doing it back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> Bad tape job. <laughs> that's okay. Let God be with it. That's a huge nap. So, that was. who are any other producers you looked up to? For real, most definitely. That's yeah. like my number one who I really looked up to because he's more of a different sound. Mm-hmm. Like him and the Neptunes, they was, had a different sound, but it was always big. But it was like simple stuff though, and it was just so hard. And I was like, how did they do that? Mm. Like there's room in it? Yeah, it's like so much room so the artist can really do whatever on it. Like, damn, like what can I do? You mm-hmm. feel me? Yeah. It's just really spacey. Because like. when I was doing Blocker, I was thinking like that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> for Pusha T. I was thinking just like that. I'm like, all right, so I'm going to just make a, a simple beat with like three or four sound instruments playing mm-hmm. and drums and 808s and all that. Mm-hmm. And then my boy Travis Scott added all the vocal. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Do you ever yeah. do you ever come up with like parts, vocal parts or ideas that like lead, lead your artists? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Not all the time, you know. Some you just gotta let people get in their creative mode. So, is there like ghost tracks that you singing and be like, yo? Of course. Okay. Oh yeah, I was on Chief Keef, hey, being sober. Did nobody even know that I was in the background singing on it, <laughs> for real. <laughs> I was on. I'm on a lot of stuff that people don't even know about. Mm. Like the French Montana Paranoid, I was on the original version of it. Yeah, like, don't nobody know. Now, now you just expose it. Yeah. Now everybody know. <laughs> I, you know. Is, there, is there like a type of sound, like a mood that you're trying to create? I asked because we spoke to Pusha about Blocka, mm-hmm. and he had he like went to a kind of dark place when mm-hmm. he was writing that song. In real life, I was going through a, like a dark place because I made the beat at Quad Studio. I had a whole vibe of a dark vibe in that studio, so it was like, mm. damn. And then I had uh, called Travis Scott over. He, I played in the, um, like, mind you, it was only like a four by loop mm-hmm. of the whole song. I played it for me, like, bro, this shit is so dark. Like, I'm like, bro, I don't know. It just came up on me like that. I'm, he, yo, I need it. I need it. So I gave him the whole loop, just looped it. <laughs> just looped it all the way through. And then he came back. I think he went to Hawaii. He played it for Kanye or something. <clears throat> they like, man, give it to uh, Pusher. Give it to Pusher. Yeah, next thing you know, mm-hmm. the blocker. Got him. Yeah. Polo the Don asked me once Shout to name Polo. three of the best things I ever did, and I couldn't answer it. He got upset. So, I'm put you on the spot. Three things that I ever did? The best you feel is the best. It as doesn't even have music. to, yeah, it doesn't even have to be like stuff that's known. But anyway, shout out to Polo. I use this now. <laughs> shout out to Polo. I use this now all the time, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's the famous chop snare now. Thank Come you. On. He went. He went, He went, he didn't let me off the, the hot um, seat for like about a good hour and a half. Was at a party. Don't, like, he just pressed me. Let me take these off. Why? What do you mean why? That ain't. That should not nothing you be getting mad about. I'm not mad. I wasn't mad. No, I'm talking about him. Oh, cause. I don't know. I think he just. He's. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good. Now I gotta ask him that, but. Because he wants you to be proud. The maybe? three things. The three things that I'm most proud about is getting up out the hood. But I'm still like, even though you know. The second one is um, actually making a, a good song that the world can get, you know, fuck with. If I can say that, mm-hmm. like don't like. And the third thing is really breaking artists, like. Like, I broke so many artists in Chicago that it's crazy. Like, I see a lot of people getting deals, and this is crazy. To see me, not just saying me, me, Keith, everybody who really broke the door for down for Chicago, back down for Chicago, that's what I'm most, you know. So, that's what I'm proud of. That's a huge door. It really is. What do you, what do you think? What is, what is, how do I say this? Because this is a lot, this is a lot of energy. It's a lot, I mean, everyone, the whole world knows what's going on in Chicago. Yeah. So, like, what's the ideal, like, things are great and successful and perfect and through your eyes, like, mm-hmm. versus where it is now? 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, we like we really wasn't trying to get mainstream. Not saying we wasn't, but we really it just came to us like that. Like we weren't trying so hard like other people. Oh man, you gotta listen to this. You gotta do that. The people just automatically just felt it like a certain type of way. But what it, like? But considering the doors wide open and the mm. world knows, you know, like they they hip to the sound and they're mm. kind of like hooked on it. Yeah. Um. Everybody saying thought now. It's crazy. <laughs> foo foo everything. So what yeah, is it? they better know who that came from though. What what's 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 like the next thing though? You know the next thing. Yeah. Who all the artists that signed? They better come. They better come with it. Everybody just gotta come with it. I can't. I can't predict on what's gonna happen with it. You feel me? They just gotta stay strong and just go crazy. Okay. That's what I tell them. Like I know every artist that's in Chicago. Literally, literally. Local, major, all of them. Mm-hmm. So I just tell them, like, I give them a, a little bit of advice, like I told Bibby, like, as you sign a deal, this is gonna be kind of different because you're gonna be moving a little bit different. Mm-hmm. All your partners can't be with you at all times. Mm-hmm. Like, it just be different. Like, your whole vibe gonna be, it's gonna change. You gonna change. You mm-hmm. ain't even gonna know you change. But people gonna be like, man, you the change. It's just gonna come with it because you gotta be on guard because you got, they think you got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Sometimes really you really don't. You feel me? Just be like, you just gotta be really on it. So I try to encourage them. How do you choose, you know, who to encourage, who to discourage, who to put on? I encourage everybody. Okay. Everybody. No, it, you don't break everybody, everybody. I'm telling you. Everybody. Everybody who I sat down and talk with. Really? Everybody. I tell them. Okay. It's sneaky. They sneaky in this industry. I know this. So if you see that someone really doesn't have it, mm-hmm. I take it you just encourage them differently. <laughs> yeah, like a, a little boy, a boy just came up to me rapping in the um, in the um, what was that at the um gas station at the Texaco? I encouraged him like, bro, keep going, you gonna get it. Mm. Like another producer came up to me earlier, oh right, bro, keep going, you gonna get it. You feel me? Mm-hmm. That's what I tell them, and they don't even expect me to say that out of my mouth. They think I'll be rude to be like, man, what the hell? Cause I come from a three hundred, like like I don't got sense or something. Mm. Like I really have sense. Like it's just, I really encourage these people, like for real. And I don't be on that. Uh, nah, I just gotta really say what's up. That's what's up. For real. So how do you? The decide? next person ain't gonna say it. Is it got? Oh, okay. Never. Gotcha. They will not say it. Like a fifty cent will never tell you that on the street. He just gonna. All right, what's up? You ever have anyone? Have you, have you ever? T- been really just like I'm gonna say critical to like in a good way mm-hmm. critiquing someone that their feelings were hurt yeah a little bit I remember yeah what does that feel like it was cool I you know I ain't really think of it too much <laughs> after that you know I just had to tell her how it was that's, that's what you got people, to though most people some people want to hear some people really don't but yeah you know, like people don't even it. know I go to schools talking to all the music kids and all that. I do everything, for real. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, for real, bro. I'm telling you. You change your lives. That. For real. That's why. I, so it's important to me for them. It's important to me to tell them that because no nobody tell me that when I was in school. None of that. Because mm-hmm. I was going to music class. I hated it. Cause it wasn't it wasn't my type of genre, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. He's teaching us about orchestras. Now I got orchestras in my beat, so it was it's kind of awkward. But I was still listening, but I wasn't listening. So it was, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, how do you decide who you want to work with? I do. I was just, actually I don't even decide. They just call and just yo send chop out here, send them out, here. and I'd be like, all right, cool, come on, let's go. You feel me? It's just mm-hmm. one of those. And sometimes okay. I say no, though. You do say no sometimes. Oh, yes, most definitely. Yeah. What is, like, what's the criteria for you to say no? Um, If you're too extra, I don't like extra people, like, too bougie in Hollywood and all that. I hate that. Like, it's my definition of bougie in Hollywood. They just be in the studio with the shades on like this. Like I am right now. I feel bougie right now. Uh, <laughs> but he said leave them all. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just standing there and just don't even vibe with the person that's in the room. Mm-hmm. I hate that. That's one thing I hate about people. Like, if they do that, I just hate that. And I ran across a couple of people like that. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say no names. Mm-hmm. They big artists too. That's crazy. So you, you want to be able to work be, with somebody? Yeah. Huh? What were you gonna say? You think they would not be like that? Yeah. As you listen to their music, all mm-hmm. the street stuff they talk about, they really phony. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, is there any type of like storytelling or style of tone of voice or um, type of delivery that you think works best with what you make? No, actually, I got beat. I got a lot of beats for different artists that I pull out. Like I if see. I feel like, all right, this feel good for uh, Gucci. This feel good for uh, Keith right here. Mm. This feel good for Kanye. I mm-hmm. just get them they certain beats. Got it. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I got all type of genre, pop, everything. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can you predict what? Your sound is gonna be like in 2015. 2015, shit, we already in 2014. I hear it all over. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, this sounds just like me, <laughs> but in a different kind of way. But I understand though. I know it's music. Mm-hmm. Everybody's gonna be influenced. Be influenced by it. I hear it. I'll be like, mm-hmm. I started the three key thing, and everybody doing it. The little, the mm-hmm. little, little bounce. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Let God be with them though. Mm. Are you going to evolve your style in response money. to that? I most definitely. I'm doing it now. Uh-huh. I'm doing it right now. Until you hear this, these records this in the trap. Yes. Now, you might think you got away from my question, but Polo <laughs> didn't let me get away from mm-hmm. it. So I'm not going to let you get away from no, it. No, come on. Three of your best songs you ever done. Three of my best songs I ever done? I got to say Don't Like, Love, Salsa, and... um. Now, what's the third one? See? You got me on the last one. Because I got so many that came out of it. I'm just, them just my two top, like, really made a lot of money, like, uh, the third one. Uh, really, I made a lot of money. Yeah, they made a lot of money, too, on every last one of my songs. Man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's, hey, what's another good one, man? What? Bro. Nah, they can't answer this question. For <laughs> this you. is you. Nah, I know. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to see. Nah, that's just local, man. I'm trying. I'm, well, it could be local too. Um. What's like the happiest time you ever felt when you were just done with the song? You're finished with it. It's this new song. I just can't say it though. It's a new one. It's a puff Maybe record. That's it. It's crazy. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Um, my happiest song that I ever. I'm gonna have to say, um, Big Sean Mula. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Cause that was my first time really interacting with a big name artist, like in a studio, same studio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like with no ID them for a long, uh, like a whole year, mm-hmm. just in the studio, just sitting there. They didn't even know I was going crazy, still sitting at the uh, at my computer in the little lounge area. I like, mean, how's this? Cause it's a website in Chicago called Fix Your Drive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything I was producing was hitting it. It can be from the mainstream artist to the local Chicago. Mm-hmm. They like. How's this man still woo woo? And he's sitting right here. I was sending off beats. <laughs> like, I was sending them off so quick. They didn't even know. But yeah, Big Sean, most definitely. I was in the studio with him while he was cutting it. And we did guap and all that too. I was in there too. Oh. Yeah. 10 to 10, all that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get mad. I'm not mad. Yeah, that, that ain't even nothing to be mad about. No, nah, I wasn't mad when he asked. No, I'm talking I about think, him. I think he just, he, I don't know if he was more mad, just, yeah, he man. really wanted me to answer the question. I was stumped. I couldn't. I oh, couldn't. he wanted you to answer his yeah, question. No. That's stupid. No, I mean, <laughs> he, he wanted, because he, he he loves my music, he said he studied. So, you know, yeah. he just wanted to know, like, from, Polo, yeah, like, Polo, he, like where, what, what, what song did I think that I was the best song? From him being Throw some D's on that bitch That shit was hard as fuck you know I mean yeah And then he was rapping on that too He was going crazy Yeah <laughs> Wish that was me Shit He turned all the way up He got too much money Yeah he got hold, Let me hold $20 <laughs> Polo let me hold $20 in the snail I, got, I gotta pay for that snail too I'm sorry So when will you be 
done? When will you have like achieved everything you wanted to achieve? What will that look like? When I'm done, shit, I need to win a Grammy. I got nominated for a Grammy for the Yeezus album. Mm -hmm. Mac, shout out to Macklemore. But anyway, yeah, once I get a Grammy. Okay. That could be like next year though. It could be. Then what are you going to do? It could have been this year too. I know. If it was, you know. Agreed. Once I rigged up. Yeah. I understand. I understand. See, so that's another thing. I understand what's going on. What's going on? Nothing. I don't want to explain it, you know, right now. Okay. Just know I know. Okay. Yeah, I know. But anyway, next question. Next question. <laughs> Do you ever take a break? Do I ever take a break? Yeah. Yeah, only when I'm doing, like, interviews or something. <laughs> okay. But like right now we got a, got our laptops open because I got another producer sign. I got producer sign under me. This whole chop squad movement. Mm -hmm. We be in the cars and stuff making beats and headphones everywhere. We don't never stop. Like I just sold a beat just yesterday while they was performing to a local artist in the bathroom. You know, was changing the buddy and everything, playing the beat on the phone and everything. He picked it out and everything. So I'm grinding. It's like that. Wow. Yeah, it's just like that. I never we grinded heard that before. I'm uh -huh. telling you, I'm going. <laughs> We gonna eat. <laughs> Gotta eat. We out here. Tell you, it's real. Man, I was gonna ask if you had, you know, advice for anybody like just <laughs> early, early stages. But yeah. you seem to be doing something singular. Yeah. Like not easily replicated. Mhm. Mm yeah, a lot of people don't give me my credits too. I just be, you know, it's okay though. God's still with me. For real. I just take it one day at a time, you know. Mm -hmm. Still doing me, but yeah, we gon' we we, we be, I just be working. I don't know about nobody else. I just be in a whole workflow. Yeah. You got to. Well, we're sorry to interrupt your workflow. No, nah, you and good. Everything. <laughs> so thank you for giving us this time, though. No, nah, thank you. We really appreciate it. For real, for real. Did we get everything? Is there anything that? What, my companies and all that? Oh, no. We can mention those later. Oh, dang. Okay. Um, I think we're okay. I think we're good. Yeah. It would be nice if you could come back, like, next time you're in New York and, like, spend I'm some time definitely. with us in the studio. Like, not so many people around. Like, mm -hmm. Really just get down to it and talk about what's, what's really going on. Almost definitely. We can. Cool. Especially Cameras. After, see this. after some of them records <laughs> drop, I know some of them NDAs. I don't know if they make you sign them NDAs. What, NDAs? Yeah. Hell no. I refuse. <laughs> Nobody is I signing NDAs anymore. That's I what I've been saying. That's and they got to send me the record when they uh, when we get done with it. I don't care fuck who you is. 50 Cent or Kanye. I don't care who yeah. you is. You got to send me that record. You got to give me that record right now. Mm. Yeah. For real. I got every record in this phone right now. Don't drop it. <laughs> and I ain't playing. That's what's up. That's one thing about me and these other producers. Like, I'm really more critique about it. I'm, bruh, if we making the music, why you gotta keep it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We produced it, we did it together. Mm -hmm. Why you just gotta have it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want nobody leaking my, uh, what I look like leaking it? Who gonna leak it? Right. But you. They be right. out here lying too. Right. That's another thing. <laughs> they just lie. I just, I just can't deal with it, man. I can't be dealing with the lies, man. No one they be in a room leaking it. Oh, I'm gonna drop this. Oh, uh, blame it on uh, such such at the label. Such such had it at the label. You a damn lie. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it go. We didn't leak so many records. Love Sosa was a leak record. We leaked it ourselves. Mm. And it became his biggest song, bigger than Don't Like. Yeah. Man. Thank you. It's really nice. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thank you. It's relaxed. I've like a lot. I mm. feel like we want to talk a lot more when you put out the new stuff because I feel like it's gonna be pretty different. Yeah. Yeah, way different. <clears throat> um, all this trappy shit they just label me at. Right. Oh, he's just a trap producer. Right. Okay. Or the drill thing. Yeah. Yeah, drill sergeant. Try to be a boy, too. 
<laughs> hey, lady B, I was a drill sergeant, Kanye's drill sergeant. I was like, Are you serious? That was a headline? Yeah, it was the headline of it. I'm Kanye's drill sergeant? Kanye's, though? It's okay. I'll take it. Shout out to him. It's my homie. Yeah. Gustavo's my homie. Oh, Gustavo, so, most definitely my homie. Yeah. I met Gustavo like two, two years ago. That's about Universal. when I met him. Uh, maybe like a year ago. I showed him the Don't Like video. He was like, yo, I just got two million views on it. <laughs> he didn't even know. That did like, kind of sound like him. Yeah, like a week later, biggest song <laughs> in the whole U.S. Oh, this man crazy. He called my phone like, man, what the, yo, <laughs> um, I told you. That's funny. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. We can be done. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm. For real.